after the Bills' combined losses went for a score of 78-23. to The Vikings' spread of 16.5 points at home in the bank versus rookie quarterback Josh Allen didn't seem like enough. But that's why they play the game. As you already know, things went south quick and unraveled even quicker in an ugly loss for the Vikings, and it all started right here. Personal foul, blowing the head to initiate contact. Defense, number 98, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. This defense could never regain their momentum after this critical penalty until the second half, as Josh freaking Allen marched down for an opening TD I'm sure had to make SportsCenter's top 10. While this was a total team loss in all three phases, I'm here to call out this first half of play by the defense in what's supposed to be the identity and the backbone of this franchise under Coach Zimmer, which fell completely on their faces against a rookie quarterback from Wyoming at home. So already down 10 rip, Allen back in enemy territory, this time with a great pump fake that froze Andrew Sandejo and a beautiful strike in the end zone for another quick six. But for the Vikings, it's the miscommunication from rookie cornerback Mike Hughes to linebacker Eric Kendricks and others that leaves this wide receiver wide open. And boy, oh boy, do I mean wide open. You know, for a defense returning nearly every starter and a unit that has shown outstanding cohesiveness playing together since Mike Zimmer arrived, Play like this should rarely happen, especially at home, to Josh freaking Allen. Just make it stop, fans were thinking, right? Good teams find a way to fight back in times of adversity, and many thought they would at least stop the bleeding. However, more miscues on offense led to bad field position, and once again, the Vikings found themselves unable to stop Allen on a fourth and goal play from the one. An absolute shot to the gut when he had a chance to punch them back in the mouth and get the ball back. No linebackers over the A-gap and center. This team was not prepared to play Sunday from top to bottom. Another poor effort and weak design in an obvious QB sneak situation. There was big plays all around for the Bills offense, but for me, it was the little things that were so disheartening and uncharacteristic. Here in the red zone, where they notoriously clamp down and tighten up, the Bills rush for nine yards on back-to-back -back runs. I know it doesn't sound like much, but in the red zone, these lanes should be tight and skinny, and the bottom line is this Vikings defense is loaded with star power that should have downright dominated the Bills offense line the entire day. Red zone rushing, third down scramble conversions, picking apart cornerbacks on an island. It's all right here. Call it effort, call it game plan, or call it execution. Call it what you want. This first half was littered with plays from this defense that we're just not used to seeing, especially at home. Josh Allen and the Bills made it look way too easy as they stole the momentum from the get-go and never looked back on their way to possessing the ball for over 35 minutes of the game. Now even when the Vikings had chances to make a splash play here or there, they came up empty-handed, literally. Check out Hunter, Rhodes, and Alexander. That's three big-name defenders letting Chris Ivory wiggle his way out of trouble once again and wind up with positive yardage. Earlier in the game, it was Andrew Sendejo who did everything right pre-snap, but couldn't seal the deal, letting Marcus Murphy escape back to the original line of scrimmage. While they seemed small and minute of a result at the time, looking back now, these missed opportunities would turn out to be a clear indicator of how the rest of the game would eventually play out. Now as much of a kick to the nuts the defense took, believe it or not, the Bills left a few big plays on the table. If I'm a Bills fan, I'm oozing with encouragement from Josh Allen who dropped a 50-yard bomb in the bucket of wideout Robert Foster. Foster couldn't hold on to the pinpoint pass and possible 85-yard touchdown. Allen delivered another rope at the goal line to Kelvin Benjamin that was cradled for a moment before being punched out by Xavier Rhodes when the Bills were in the red zone. Any other week, both these plays likely go for six. So look at the bright side Vikings fans that actually somehow could have been worse. 
a testament to again just how lopsided of an affair this match started out and really just how poorly the defensive unit played as a whole. Third and six, they bring everybody. Allen comes in and again, Benjamin drops it for the second time here in the quarter. Watch this, a man's coming free. And he fires that ball. While everyone on defense had their fair share of mishaps and blunders, no one was ready for the clock to hit zeros quite like Anthony Barr, who had arguably his worst performance as a pro to date. Barr, who has played well this season in general, got off to a bad start when he was called for a 15-yard face mask on the opening drive after he found himself flat-footed and taking a poor angle near the sideline trying to take down Chris Ivory. But hey... It's early, no big deal, shake it off, right? Barr did anything but, allowing Josh Allen to rush for his first TD of his young career after Barr slipped and tripped on nothing but a turf monster and never regained enough closing speed to stop Allen from getting to the corner. From there, things somehow only got worse for Barr, who was called for another 15-yard penalty, this time on a horse caller after getting the stiff arm of the game to his face from Allen and later Allen did the unthinkable leaping over the six foot five linebacker in the open field for a first down putting Barr in his personal highlight reel for years to come. Middle free safety gotta get it go. Allen steps up jumps over the defenders to pick up the first. Now how many quarterbacks have you ever seen hurdle anyone? Nobody. That might be a first. <laughs> oh my goodness. Watch this. This is a freak oh, play. Oh, no okay. game. No way. Oh my. Wow. Goodness. And you know, who, who did he jump over? He jumped over. Was it Barr? It's Barr. It's Barr. That's bad for Barr in the, the meeting room on Monday. If you watched the game Sunday, congratulations. You literally saw the worst defensive first half performance in Vikings history. I'll leave you finally with the play that I thought summed up that performance. Getting the Bills in second and 17, scratching and clawing, finally for some momentum. A good defensive play is called, but once again, it's miscommunication and poor execution as Eric Kendricks doesn't peel off from tight end Charles Clay and give him off to Mike Hughes in zone coverage, leaving the middle of the field vacated as Chris Ivory is all by himself with not a purple jersey within 50 yards. The Bills would go on to score and eventually win 27-6. Stay tuned for plenty more Vikings breakdowns from me, Luke Inman, presented by Zone Coverage on ZoneCoverage.com. Third and four, no chance, and he's taken down by Eric Wilson back at the 20, and a flag is down. Personal foul, blowing the head to initiate contact. Defense, number 98, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. So, oh, hit right here. It's the second one coming in. Yeah, it's uh, Linval Joseph who applied it. And you don't need to do that. He's already wrapped up.